Good afternoon. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Diana Boyd. I'm the Vice President of Nursing. Mr. James and I will be doing the sessions today, and we're glad to see a full house. So thank you for coming and giving us some of your time. We're going to start with an eye care standard, um, which is our typical for all of our meetings. And we're going to use the E standard for excellence. As you see, there are a few of the standards of behavior that we have listed. Be responsive to individual patient needs, actively seek solutions to problems, work collaboratively, collaboratively with a positive attitude, easy for me to say. Um, and then we kind of ask for some feedback from you. What does excellence mean to you? You know, what examples of excellence can you share with us that you've seen in the organization or in the department where you work? Um, anything that anyone's willing to share? We've had some brave souls in our last program, so. Anything anyone's willing to toss out there? No takers this time. Kathy, thank you. Just, I, I walk the halls a lot, as people know, and I always see people washing their hands, so I appreciate you seeing that. So. Oh, good. Thank you. We received another award. Um, this is the 2015 Care Checks Quality Rating Score. They scored us at a 98, which ranks us nationally in the top 100 hospitals. Their check mark and 2 plus is their top score. Um, they are actually a privately held information company, um, nationally recognized, and they are a part of Comparian Medical Analytics. So they look at financial as well as customer satisfaction and clinical outcomes when they do their um, award presentation. So um, that was a new one on us. and. Felt great to get it. The second one is the Healthy Ohio Worksite Award from ODH. Um, this has been kind of a step through the process. We had received a bronze and a silver before, so we've now received the gold award, um, and it's for our employee wellness program, um, which in the one to five organizations in the large employer category to receive this designation. So thanks to all the employees that are participating in the employee wellness. Um, that is a big part of this award. Quality core measures. For those of you that are in the clinical areas, you probably are very well aware of these. Um, Medicare has set a series of clinical quality factors that they want everyone to monitor. 100 is the goal for everyone. Um, as you can see, we've made some great strides on a lot of them. Fourth quarter, we had hundreds in everything except VTE. VTE is venous thrombosis embolism, and it's a prevention, and there's about four different moving parts in that. So we still have a little struggle making sure that all four of those parts line up and we get 100% each time on all of our patients. So we have made some progress, um, but we are still working on some improvements in that category. As you can tell, Medicare um, does retire, like AMI got retired last year. So there, there's some shuffling of these core measures, and Carol knows them intricately. But as we advance into 2015 and 16, you'll see some different core measures come up and some that get retired. Um, but thanks to all the efforts to doing our pneumonia vaccines and our hand hygiene and um, all of the measures that go along with these. Hand hygiene, um, we were at 90% for the fourth quarter, which is a little bit up. Third quarter, we had dipped a little bit to 87, and second quarter was 93. So you can tell from the, um, the low of the first quarter of 64%, the board had set a standard of 100%, which is the goal of everyone. Anyone that walks into a patient room, I don't care what you're walking in for, if it's to deliver a piece of paper, please gel in and gel out. Um, because we can all contribute to um, SSIs and different things through our hand hygiene. So we're going in the right direction. Um, we want to hit 100 each and every time, and we do look at this every month. So thanks to all the efforts in that regard. Our age caps, um, you see a fair amount of variability. Um, our rating of 9 to 10 has stayed right around the 50th percentile. We peaked a little bit in the third quarter um, in all of our categories, which we're trying to get a handle on what exactly we did in the third quarter differently. Um, fourth quarter, you see a little bit of a drop in a few things. Um, recommend UH has been right around that 40th percentile. Um, communication with nurses dropped in the fourth quarter as well as communication <coughs> with docs. Um, and the responsiveness of staff stayed at the 50th percentile, which is good. Hospital environment has stayed right around that mid 40th percentile, and that's cleanliness and noise um, level in and around the rooms, which we all can contribute to or help eliminate. Pain management um, was really high in third quarter, and then it dropped again in fourth, and I, we haven't really changed anything. So there again, we're trying to get more feedback from the patients and families and try and figure out what we're doing differently in that avenue. Communication with meds, you can see a nice, steady in increase. Um, small, but it's going in the right direction. Um, we've done a lot of things with medications um, as far as handouts and, and trying to make sure that the patients know what medications are on and what they're for. Pharmacy has helped a lot. And then discharge instructions. We've had a little bit of a decline in that. Discharge instructions uh, is an area that we've put some added resources 
Um, home care has added a transitional nurse who is dealing right now with the chronic lung patients and trying to make sure that they've got their appointments set up, understand what their discharge instructions are, what their medications are for, um, appointments are set, and then um, Susan is working with the inpatient nursing from an employee engagement, or an employee engagement, patient engagement, um, working with some chronic disease um, and some other patients that may have some gaps um, in their resource knowledge and um, trying to help make sure that they've understand their medications and what their expectations are at home. Um, so those, we've put some dedicated efforts into those to see if we can decide what it is that's, that's measuring these and what things we can improve. Prescani, um, this is kind of a moving target as well. Inpatient stayed right around the 50th percentile. Our mean scores really haven't changed more than a few points over the years. ED had a couple of really good quarters, first and second quarter, um, and then they've dropped a little bit, although they're on their way back up. We do expect a little bit more dropping when the ED expansion project starts, um, because parking will be affected, and um, we're trying to eliminate that as much as we can with valets, but you know there's going to be some um, dissatisfiers in that regard. Outpatient um, is on a nice trend going up. Um, PT and HealthPlex and radiology and all those places that have all the outpatient, they've got a little bit tougher standards because there are, their mean score is already in the 90s. So each 0.1 or 0.2 can really affect your percentile changes. So they've been wrestling with that animal for quite a while, but they're, they're on a nice upward trend there. First Care, um, they've done some nice changes, um, had a couple of dips, but I know Carrie's working hard on, on changing down there and making sure that their patients are being well received. And ambulatory surgery, is you're seeing a nice slow increase on their scores as well. They've put some things into place with their discharge education and um, changed around some of the furniture and um, kind of made it a little bit more open and inviting. So they're working on their scores as well. Financially, this is the first close, which means it's unaudited. Um, so you can tell that we, what we build from the inpatient side was 69 million, um, outpatients 161.5. Um, so not quite three to one, somewhere right around there. Total build was 231 million. What we discounted from insurance allowance, bad debt, charity um, was 123.5 million. Um, one of the things that we had seen last year, and I think we're trending probably still this year, is a lot of the bad debt is high deductible plans. Patient, patients can't meet their deductibles. They can't pay their out of pockets. They can't pay their co-payments. Um, so our charity care has moved some with the Medicaid, but bad debt has been replaced by the high deductible plans. So what we receive for patient care is 107.5 million. What we receive from other sources is 5.9 million, and that's cafeteria revenue, rent from our office spaces, um, and meaningful use funds. Um, we received about 5 million in meaningful use, which is kind of the stimulus that the federal government put in place for to encourage hospitals and facilities to become electronic. Um, so it's, it's a big financial undertaking to move everything toward electronic, so they do have some some targets that you have to meet, and if you meet those, they do give you some money back toward those efforts. Um, so the IT department, everyone has done a nice job with that. So what we collected was 113 million point four, and how we spent that, um, which is typical, salaries and benefits are a big proportion of what we spend. We are highly FTE dependent or personnel dependent. So 57.5 million in salaries and benefits, 42.3 in supply services and other, and then insurance depreciation and interest is 8.3. So total expenses were 108. Um, so what we have remaining to invest in the facility um, is 5.3 million or 4.9 percent operating, er, operating margin. Now one thing to remember is that 5 million of that was from what we call one-time money because there's no guarantee that it's going to continue. Um, quite a bit of it was from meaningful use and Dave correct me if I'm wrong but we should have some meaningful use yet in 2015 but some of the other one-time money is from special programs so there are upper payment limits that the feds and the state have done on um, reimbursement for patient care, um, Medicaid expansion, different things that you know just takes the swipe of a pen from the legislature to, to change. So we can't really rely on that, um, which is why Gene is always with us trying to make sure that we're operating as efficiently as, and least expensively as possible, um, just so we can try to, to make up for that. New patient portal, um, probably a lot of you in this room are aware that we have been um, trying to get our inpatient signed up for patient portal. Um, IT, care management, medical records, um, there's a lot of departments that are working on this. It's another one of the meaningful use criteria. We have to have 5% of our inpatient population um, sign on to the portal, but they have to do it from home. So even though we may get their email address here and we may 
get them signed on, they still have to sign on from home and get onto the portal from home for us to get counted. So if anyone has been a patient within the last year, um, the portal access is off of our webpage, so you can go on and sign on and sign on from home. That would be helpful. Um, but we are working with all of our inpatients. Now the physicians also have this requirement in the office. Um, so it's even more difficult for them, because if you think about it, if you go to three different physicians, you may have three different portals that you're being asked to sign on for. But it also affects their meaningful use money as well. Um, but for them, it's even a little bit trickier because you not only have to sign on from home, but you also have to ask them a medically relevant question. So they're having a, even a bigger struggle than I think we are um, to get people to sign on. So that's just a big push, and we wanted to be sure that, that you guys were all aware of that. Admissions passed patient days the last 12 months. Um, we stabilized from admissions last year, um, which was nice to see. Patient days are still a little bit on the gradual decline. You can see we dropped from 22.4 on patient days to 21.6, um, and our admissions were 53.13 to 53.21. So last year we didn't drop quite as much as we expected, which was nice to see. Average daily census were down to 59.3 from a high at, in 2008 of 78. So a little less, gra or a little less steep decline there. Um, but it is still a little bit going on the downward trend. ED visits and outpatient registrations um, are both up, um, which we expected you know, with Medicaid expansion. That's one of the reasons that we're doing the ER expansion. Um, it was built for about 35 to 37,000 and we're running 44. Um, so it's a little undersized. Um, and then outpatient registrations, which are anything that's outpatient, lab draws, radiology, any of those kind of things, they were up last year too. So that was good to see. Surgeries and deliveries. Deliveries have stayed pretty stable over the years. They average right around 690 to 700. Um, and surgery stabilized last, stabilized last year. Um, we had a little bit of a downward trend from 12 to 13, which was probably a little bit of the balancing between what goes to ambulatory surgery and what stays here and, and how that juggle goes. Um, and then high deductible plans. You know, we're seeing a lot of patients wait. They put things off if, if it's not an emergency that they need. Um, so it stabilized last year, which was very helpful. Now I'm going to turn the program over to Mr. James. Thanks, Diana. I'm going to start over and uh, with the employee engagement survey. This is the second year in a row that we have had uh, the advisory board do our engagement survey. This year we had 75 percent participation as compared to last year where we had 76 percent, so pretty much the same numbers. But this year we ended up with a score of 5.21 compared to a median of 5.04. That put us at the 75th percentile. Now, most hospitals don't jump from the 61st percentile one year to the 75th percentile the next year. So we're really excited about that. I know it's, it might not seem like a lot, but we have a philosophy here and that philosophy is that we believe we need to have engaged employees in order to have good customer satisfaction and good quality of care. So it's important to us what the employees tell us in this survey. So every year we, we will be doing one of these and we want everybody to participate. They always tell us what some of the top strengths are and what some of the top opportunities are. These are the things that you told us that you liked best about working at Union Hospital. It revolves around pay, enough staffing, helping deal with burnout and stress, which is important in today's healthcare environment. And the organizations do a good job in uh, selecting and implementing the technologies that we use. Where do we have opportunities? Conflicts resolved fairly in my department. Having relationships with my coworkers, my coworkers doing a good job, and abusive behavior is not tolerated. One of the things that we in senior management are going to attempt to do this year is working for one of those opportunities is try to get to the conflict statement. That's why you'll notice on today's evaluation it's a little bit different from what you've seen in previous times. We're asking you to kind of identify what those kinds of conflicts are in your area so we know which one, because there's lots of different kinds of conflicts. So we want to know if it's work scheduling, if it's vacation scheduling or what. So please fill that out. Uh, if you're in a department that was below the 50th percentile, you will be asked to have an action plan. So that department director is putting together an action plan and the staff will be involved in that. For those departments that were above the 50th percentile, it's voluntary, but we're always asking people to do a good job, that are doing a good job, to try to do a better job. We're at the 75th percentile, but we don't want that to slip. We want it to go up. So everybody has to kind of do these in their individual departments. And please remember that what you do in your department may be completely different from somebody in a different department because these are related to the, the individual work environment. So you'll be seeing that. Next thing that we wanted to do was talk about communications. Carrie Gardner and I oftentimes get asked, I don't see as many billboards as we used to do or I don't see as many ads in the newspaper. Well, we used to do the traditional model of newspaper, radio, 
some uh, cable television billboards and that sort of thing. But in today's market, we're spending more of our marketing dollars on the internet. So if you go out and look at the internet, you're going to see a lot more with, uh, about union. You know if you go out and you Google something and it, brings up, and it brings up a series of ads on the right side or somewhere on that sheet? Well, if you go out and Google something that's health related, you may see a Union Hospital ad coming up because we, we can now track those to the, the individual thing that somebody's looking So if you're in a Tuscarawas County environment and you're on your computer and you put in, I want to know something about cardiovascular disease, it may come up with a Union Hospital ad in there. We also have um, a website. Now this is the new website page that's under development, so if you go out and look at the one we have out there today, it's not going to look quite like this. But we're, we're working on doing that. We do get a lot of people who go out and look for their information this way. One of the things we started doing a few years ago, we no longer publish our annual report. You go out to the website and you uh, pull it up on the website because we got rid of the, the printing cost. We also have an a emergency center, face, uh, excuse me, we have a Facebook page, but this is the website page. And carrie has been doing a series of man on the street type things where every month he'll, he'll ask somebody and talk through some things. And this is to try to keep the interest in this. This project's going to take about 18 months, so we want people to keep being uh, interested in, and involved. And as I was saying, we do have Facebook. This is the Union Hospital Facebook page. And we have the emergency center page. We see that uh, social media is one of those things that uh, we're getting a lot more uh, information, a lot more response out. So, you know, they told me at one point that if you were below 50, you're probably getting most of your information uh, on the internet. And I actually know some people who are over 60 that probably do that. And um, so, if when somebody asks you in the public, or we, why aren't you you're seeing as many billboards? Tell them that's on the internet. They can go out there and look. One of the things we know we have to do to grow is to continue to get new physicians. So we have some new physicians coming. Dr. James Goff is a family medicine, sports medicine doctor that's actually currently practicing at SUMA. He will be uh, coming down and joining East Ohio Ortho, I believe, in April. Uh, he will actually help a lot of the access issues. He'll deal with uh, sports injuries that relate to soft tissue injuries, concussions, those sort of things. But he also can be the first person to see people that are, don't have obvious breaks uh, that need the orthopod for surgery and try to get people into that practice a little bit sooner. Dr. Denise Miller is the last of the physicians at the Arrowhead Clinic in Newcomerstown. Uh, New uh, Arrowhead Clinic was em employed uh, by Coshocton. Uh, either we or Trinity Twin City have hired all their doctors except her. So now she's actually leaving and going to go into practice with Dr. Borrier and Dr. Colson. And I think that will be about June when she comes on. Uh, Dr. Casey Perkowski is coming back home. He's finishing his residency in family medicine at Altman and will be down here practicing at the UPS Central Office. Uh, I've been here long enough that I can tell people directions of where things used to be. That used to be the Dover Ortho Office. Um, Lindsay Moore is a dermatologist. She's originally from Carrollton. Uh, she's finishing up her res residency, I think it's in Missouri, but she will be here probably in July to start a dermatology practice. And then Dr. Will Burgett is finishing up a fellowship in major joints up in New York. Dr. Burgett will join East Ohio Ortho and will be the person that will be kind of taking over Dr. Holder's practice as Dr. Holder kind of moves into a retirement mode. And for those of you who are keeping up with the people that are in UPS, Dr. Leindecker and her staff moved to UPS uh, the 1st of January, so they are another UPS practice. Talking about UPS, one of the things that we're doing a little bit differently now is rather than having the single physician practice, we're going to what we call pods, and that's putting multiples of doctors and practi uh, advanced practitioners in one site. Our first effort is over here at UPS Central, which will have three physicians and three nurse practitioners. We're also uh, about to uh, ink a deal that's up in the north end of the county, north end of Dover, not the county, excuse me, uh, in the north end of Dover that will have four physicians and four nurse practitioners practicing at that site. The reason for this is that a lot of times people who have been, had a doctor leave kind of feel abandoned and we sometimes lose them out of the system. So this way, if your doctor's not available, you can be there. Second reason, access. I call today, I want to be seen today. People don't want to wait two days to see the doctor. So if my doctor's not there today, it happens to be the day off, they're on vacation, there's another practitioner there that can see you. That way you don't have to fall into one of our alternate systems or heaven forbid go to one of our competitors to try to get some of that work. The third piece of that is this begins to allow us to begin, do a medical home model. We'll begin to add social workers, 
uh, case managers, people that are, can deal with uh, patients that need more than just seeing the practitioner. Um, if you're in a single practice, you don't need a social worker to, to handle it. But you may, in a practice of eight, or even if we combine two of the practices, ha have maybe 12, 15 people, uh, you, you, one social worker probably is generating enough work that they can follow up there. So this is the changing model in primary care. And you're going to see us uh, moving towards this over the next uh, couple of years. The emergency center. We've been talking about the emergency center on March 2nd. We will put up the fence. So right now we've, we, we're kind of in a hiatus. We're letting people get in. Uh, we realize it's been nothing but warm winter here, that, so people hadn't had to walk very far. But really in the cold weather we wanted to try to leave as much parking out there as we could for people to come in. Uh, so when March 2nd comes up, this uh, fence is going to go up and you're going to see, uh, you're going to lose quite a bit of parking and this will lose parking over here as well as this is where the temporary um, heliport's going to be. If you remember we said we will lose 160 parking spaces during the process of the um, construction and during overall the whole thing we will lose uh, 60 once everything's done. We can absorb the 60, going to be a little tight on the 160. Now what I'm going to show you is we're going to go to a aerial flyby of the exterior of the building and I'll kind of talk you through what we're looking at as we go through this because there is no sound. You have to listen to my voice. We start out at the front of the hospital as we go to the right. You'll notice this is where MRI is. This little dip down here is the patio off the cafeteria and once you get past that that's all the new construction. The side of the building that you're looking at now is the only part of the building that will have windows. The windows on the lower level are uh, some office space on the windows on the upper level are the uh, ED observation rooms. Uh, the rooms in themselves don't have uh, any uh, windows in them. That's why you have these light uh, coming into the hallway over the top of the building. As you come around you can see the new helipad and you can see where the ambulances come in. They'll turn around back in under the canopy and then right behind the second ambulance you'll see a door appearing uh, that door is where, where they will take patients in, go up the elevators, and uh, up into the main level. This is the employee entrance to the right here. That will be if you're par parked in the parking lot, you can come in that entrance and actually you'll be coming through the cafeteria as you go there. Uh, you can see the Great Wall. There's the Great Wall that we built earlier. Uh, there's a temporary parking lot up there at the moment. When we finish the parking lot, there'll be this huge canopy that's up here so that people can drive under and let people out. The entrance will be where the entrance is and it goes into the same waiting room that we currently have. We will renovate that space and all of that will, um, will be there uh, at the end of the project. We'll actually take over the top part of the project before we um, finalize the thing. And now I'm going to get out of this. Yep. And we're talking about a few new people in management. Uh, Cindy Quinn, uh, who joined us uh, last fall as the Director of Health Information Management. Mike Jackson came in January as our Director of Facilities and Maintenance. And then Jackie Bianchi is, has joined uh, IT as the Applications Manager. I like to kind of say uh, Lorna is planning on retiring at some point this year and Jackie's overlapping so that Lorna can kind of do a brain dump uh, because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on in the IT department. We do have several events in the life of the hospital. We, uh, we sponsor a community walking tour uh, at the um, Newtown Mall. This walking program uh, has a lot of participants uh, and that once a year they recognize the people. I believe it's a minimum of 10,000 steps. Well Shane here did 50,000 steps last year in 2014 um, and was recognized recently. Uh, we do a lot with the students in the area. This is UH Tech. This was the first one in January. They just did one this past weekend with a lot of students. This is our effort to help students in Tuscarawas County uh, see if they want to come into health care because we don't want them to think that we're just doctors and nurses at the hospital. That there are a lot of other jobs that are here or they may, the jobs that are here may be different from what they think they are. So this is an opportunity to expose them to a lot of the different things that we do. January is always a big month for retirement. Um, we had three uh, receptions during the month. This is from Wayne Hayes. Wayne you may not have seen a lot because Wayne worked in the OR. 
So uh, he was back working uh, in scrubs most of the time. But he was here for 17 years. Uh, on the other hand, I think most everybody had seen Mary Dubois. She's, she was here for 37 years, I think we've decided. Uh, most, if not all, of that on the medical unit. And then Vicki Bolts had about 17 years in, in radiology uh, as, when she retired. This is one of those things that happens. Uh, we happen to be in, somebody happened to be out in the parking lot the day that we opened it. This person drove up, was the first person to park in the parking lot, so we took a picture of her, okay? So this is just, an, uh, this is just to let you know that the emergency center parking lot is open, uh, and we're, we're getting ready to go to the next phase of the, the project. Uh, we are continuing to raise money for the project. Uh, the Lauren uh, Emergency Center to date has raised about uh, 2.5 million in pledges. Thank you, Monty. Uh, this was one of the pledges that was coming in from our retirees. Uh, Bill Harding and Eileen Wren are shown here given a check for $650 that they collected from retirees. So, in summary, uh, things we want you to take away with today as Union continues to be recognized for quality, patient safety, and this particular time, uh, workplace wellness. Uh, 2014 was a good year for us. The, the volume was better than, than uh, we expected, which is a good thing. We don't want to get lost on the fact that uh, some of that money is one-time money, but uh, it was real money, so it's a, it's a good thing for us. Our engagement score with our employees is a 5.21. That puts us at the 75th percentile. We're really excited about that, but we're also really excited that we can go up from there and not stay there. Uh, Union is continuing to use more internet services. We still do some of the traditional uh, media markets, but we, you don't see it as much because a lot of people are seeing that individually on the internet. And then finally, the ED parking uh, is complete and we're getting ready to start the new ED project come uh, the 1st of March. And with that, uh, we are finished and we can take any questions that anyone has.